Hi, this is Jay from Encodian. Um, in this video, I'm going to run through how to set up a trial for our new uh, trigger product, which um, enables you to take a single power automate flow and make it available uh, across multiple SharePoint sites. Um, it's really straightforward. What you can do is you go to www.encodian.com, our website. We can click on products and go to the trigger page. Uh, and once we get to the trigger page, we can we can fill in the web form. For those of you who may already be a customer uh, and you have access to the Encodian account portal, you can activate a trial from within there, and we'll cover that in a slightly different video in terms of that sign-up process. But for now, uh, if you want to sign up for a, um, a trial of the trigger product, whether you're an existing customer or not, simply come to the uh, website, navigate to the trigger page, and you can click on Activate Free Trial, which will take you down to the web form. And it's simply a case of filling out the details, I'm going to pop my name in from Encodium, technology, uh, pop in my email address, and this is a, a developer tenant that I've got set up, I'm going to accept the terms there, uh, and this is an important part here, we need to pop in the Office 365 tenant ID. Now, if you're not sure how to, um, or you're not sure what your Office 365 tenant ID is, what you can do, if you go to support.encodium.com uh, and do a search for tenant, uh, you'll see there's a top suggestion for retrieve your Microsoft 365 tenant ID and that just gives you um, the, the options that you have to, to go and find the correct ID. Now this is just saying within uh, the Azure portal, um, go to Active Directory and look in basic information. I've already got that up so I've gone into portal.azure.com clicked on Active Directory and I can see the correct tenant ID there. And it's quite important that you, you put that in correctly first time. Um, if you don't, there are some options to actually fix that in the encoding portal later on. But this is used um, later on to, to, so that we can correctly find your subscription when you're within SharePoint. So, uh, But I filled out that form and I can click Submit. Uh, and that's going to go through and set my trial up. We need to take a copy of this API key. Uh, this is what you'll use within Power Automate later on. So I'm going to take a copy of that. Uh, but also note, I should have received an email from Encodium, which I have done here. So I've got an email from Dan saying, welcome to your trial. And in here, it's got the, the steps that I need to take. Um, and it's also got the information about my API key, my account, and my password to log into the Encodium account portal. Now, obviously, I'll delete these credentials later on, but it kind of gets me going. What I'll do in the first instance, I'm going to click on the first article here. So let's just, um, I'll copy that link and I'll pop it into, into here. And it's taking me through the steps that I need to, to go through to get this up and running. It's fairly straightforward. So the first step is I need to install um, the Encoding Trigger app package uh, in my Microsoft 365 tenant. So first things first, I need to download the app package. It's a standard issue. Um, SharePoint package, nothing special about it as such. Um, I need to go to uh, the SharePoint admin portal and add an app as I would with any other app. So let's just quickly do that. Um, I'm going to SharePoint admin and I think it's apps I need to go to from memory. Uh, where's it gone? Oh, here we go. Go into apps, click open. Um, if you haven't set up a, an app catalog before, it'll just automatically set one up for you now. I have, so it's going to load up the list of SharePoint apps. I simply need to upload the SharePoint package. Uh, so that's uploaded. Uh, and now it's asking me to trust it. So two options here. You can just enable this app so that people can, again, this is not specific to encoding. These are just app packages. Uh, I can just enable the app so people can selectively install it in, in the sites they want to install it in. Or I can automatically deploy it to all sites. So I'm just going to accept the default and deploy that to all sites. And that's going to enable and deploy that app. And that extension will now be deployed across all sites. Excellent. So that, that's nice and straightforward. Now what I can do, I've done the first part, installing the app. Excellent. Uh, we've run through that article. Great. Uh, let's go back to the email. And it says the next steps are to create a trigger action. So again, let's just copy that link. And I'll pop it into here. Uh, and this takes us through the, the next step. So... There's a couple of different things I need to do here. Firstly, I need to create the actual Power Automate flow that I want to make available across SharePoint. Um, and then secondly, um, I need to go into the Encoding account portal and actually configure trigger so that it makes that flow that I've created available. So let's, let's create a flow in the first instance. So I'm going to navigate over to Power Automate. I'm going to create a new flow and I'm going to create an automated cloud flow and I'm going to search for the Encodian 
trigger. Here we go. And it's asking me to enter or create an encoding connection. Now, if you've already used um, encoding Flower, you can just use exactly your existing connection. You won't be prompted for this. Um, if you've not used encoding before, you're going to be prompted to create this connection. So I'm just going to call it encoding. I'm going to go back to my email and I'm going to find my API key that I've been emailed and that I can use for setup. Oh, apologies. Click on the right tab. Click API P, uh, API key even, and click create. Now, I'm just going to call this uh, share file information. And this is a demo flow. Um, so that, next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do something. So let's just do get file properties. Now, the interesting thing here is just, and this is a, a bit of a, um, a bit of a mis, well, not a limitation as such, it's easily explainable. So what the trigger action is going to do, and there's loads more articles on this, but it's going to provide lots of useful information about where the flow was triggered from. So for example, if I look in, uh, in here, you can see I've got the dynamic site address, the library ID, um, any form fields, who triggered the flow, file identifiers, one or more items, so on and so forth. Um, now, if I was to use this information straight away, which is absolutely fine, I can do that. And I can do enter custom value, put the library name in. And again, I can pipe pop in the item ID. Now, that will work when you run it. The slight problem is I can't configure the rest of the flow. So let's just bring this up. So I want to send an email v2. Probably going to need to create a connection because I've not used this before. Right. So let's just say I'm going to be really silly and send this back to myself. Um, obviously, to, if I wanted to send that to a different user, I can use a dynamic form to prompt the user when executing the flow to provide extra information. But again, we'll cover that in a slightly different uh, scenario in some of the other videos. But um, file selected. Now here in lie the problem, I can't see any of the dynamic data from the SharePoint action because um, uh, we've got dynamic data in there. Real simple fix when you're building your flows for the first time and you're using dynamic information, what we'll do is we're just going to select uh, one of the existing ones documents and ID and what you'll find straight away then is that information becomes available and I can use it um, actually what I'll do I'll just do file ext file name with extension uh, more details I'm not going to obviously type these in this is just a demonstration to show you how this might work now what we can do I can just knit back up here and I can change that back to use the dynamic data and what we'll do is we'll just get rid of that and library list name and again, we'll get rid of the item ID and pop item in. So that is now a completed flow and I can save that. Okay, excellent. So we've created our flow. Um, we're using the dynamic data coming from Trigger to go and get the file properties from wherever we might be. And then we're gonna send an email. What, I'm gonna, what I need to do now, if I look at the article, so I've kind of done this first bit where, and again, this runs through those details about how to, to get the right information, so on and so forth. Um, and you'll notice the next bit is to create the trigger action from within the encode, encoding account portal. Okay, so let's uh, let's dive in there. And what I should be able to do, oh, apologies, Can't use that one. It's going to prompt me to log in. Again, credentials have been sent to you in your email, so we can go back, grab those. And this is going to sign me into the encoding account portal for the first time. Uh, and now what I can do, I can click on encoding trigger. And there's a configuration screen here, which we can go to. Um, and it said that I've, I've got, it's telling me that I'm using a trial. Uh, and it's saying that no actions have been found. So I need to add a new trigger action that's going to be made available across SharePoint. So you'll see straight away that the flow that I've created is available. So all the flows that you create within Power Automate that you're using the encoding trigger action. So that is this thing here will be made available in this list and you can search for them. But I'm just going to select share file information. It will pull through the title and the description automatically. Um, uh, and I can provide a run message, which is a message that's going to be sent to the user on execution. So I'm just going to say uh, run message is uh, your details. 
15 cents. So nice and straightforward. I only want this action to appear in a document library because within my flow, I'm using get file properties, which is obviously not going to work in a SharePoint list. So I don't want it to appear in SharePoint list, just library. So I'll untick that. Um, if I wanted to ask for dynamic uh, form data, uh, I, I, I can do that here, but we'll cover that in a, as, again in a separate video. And site management, I can do some clever stuff around targeting specific sites, but again, we'll cover that in a later, in a, uh, a later video. I'm just going to click create, and it's going to tell me that the, sh the share file information has been completed. Now, at this point, we have literally done it. <laughs> so if I navigate to SharePoint site, and I'll just refresh this page. Um, so I've, I've previously deployed the add-in, the, the trigger add-in, and I've now created a Power Automate flow, and I've created an encoding uh, trigger action to take that Power Automate flow and make it available uh, within the trigger add-in. So bringing that to life a little bit. If I select a file here, we should see the encoding actions option. So if we select that, that's going to launch up uh, a panel. And for every single uh, action that I've created and published in the site, so it could be one or more, we'll see the option to start that flow. If I was to click start and it's got dynamic form, I'd be asked for further data. This doesn't have a dynamic form, so I'll just click start and it's going to start that. And it says your action has been started and your details have been sent. Behind the scenes, what's going to happen, and I know that's ran because I've just had a ping in my ear. If I look, jump over to my email, you can see that the file's already been sent and that email, according to that flow, has been invoked. If I jump over to Power Automate, you will see, if I go to the run history, that that has just been started uh, seven seconds ago. You can see the file properties. The site address has been dynamically popped in. Uh, it's got the file properties and then it has sent the email as well. So... This, if I was to navigate to any of the site's libraries, I will see the actions menu everywhere. And again, I just to click, click actions, click start. And you'll see how quick that is. It's pretty much instant. And I can see again in the run history that that Power Automate flow has been invoked. So 49 milliseconds to get that, that invoked and sent. So obviously that first run was a bit slow there, but generally um, it will be pretty much instantaneous um, Power Automate permitting. <laughs> Uh, again, jump back, I'll refresh that, and you can see that it's happened again, super quick. Um, so hopefully that gives you uh, an end-to-end -end about how to get set up. Um, there's a collection of the videos as well that you might want to check out in terms of if you're an existing Flow subscriber uh, or an indexer subscriber, how you can get trigger activated through the encoding account portal, um, but also how you can use dynamic forms and other things within trigger. Um, if you do have any questions that... Um, uh, aren't covered in the support portal, um, then please email support at and the team will be on hand to provide assistance as needed.